Oh, I'm getting more now. I got a tuner I found. I meant to bring it. Kind of heavenly gracious Father God, Lord, we just thank you and praise you tonight, Lord, Father God, Lord, for an opportunity to help a sound mind, Father God, Lord, to come back up to thy house tonight, Lord, to sing songs to you, Father God, Lord, to praise you, to look up one another, Father God. Lord, give us what we need tonight, Father God, Lord, and let us be free in the spirit. Lord, we ask in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 At the bottom of the page, in the sweet mind. There's a land that is fairer than this, and by faith we can.
you know, how many times has that happened in our lives, you know? And I know it's not everything that we don't, you know, we're not going to pro promise we'll never get an accident, but I'm telling you how many times God has just reached down and Amen. let you have an insider. How many times I went to step on the gas and the car didn't go and I'm trying to figure out why and there goes something I didn't see out of a blind spot and if I would have went when I wanted to go it wasn't going to be good. You know? And I don't know, maybe I'm not the only one that happens to but I'm telling you, I know I owe God a lot of thanks for a lot of times for serving my life, Brother Joey and uh, keeping me from harm. Man. I'm thankful for that. And there's times when he's warned me about things to check something or to do something. I didn't do it, and I didn't do it, and then it happened, and I should have done it. And the Holy Ghost let me know I should have done it ahead of time. He was trying to tell me, change that tire. You know, it's going to go flat. <laughs> and it happened. But I'm thankful tonight. I'm glad I, I got one that does stand by me tonight. Amen. Someone else have a request tonight? Brother Terry, do you know the Bible 345?
I faced my darkest fear. I had no gaze and lost it, and I no more joy in her. Had to raise the only no one deserved. God's been good in my life. And 
our lips will never quiver for the friends that have gone on before. Amen. Sometimes uh, 
I'm not as obedient as I should be, and I, 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 I'd be a foolish man to stand up here tonight and try to tell you that I'm not a, a perfect person, that I am a perfect person, because I'm not. None of us are good. The Bible says not one, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to do the best we can for the Lord Jesus right. Christ. Amen. And we're going to look tonight at one that had ups and downs in his life. God used mightily, and there's ups and there's downs all along our Christian wall each and every day. We're going to be in the 1 Kings 17 chapter. We're going to be in that neighborhood tonight. We're going to look at Elijah. And the things in the, in the scripture here that he's gone through uh, shows us no matter what we do and no matter what we go through, when we're used by God, there are going to be ups and there's going to be downs. Amen. Sometimes you, you, we, God has us do things and we thought, well, this makes absolutely no sense. But then you see God at work and it makes sense. Sometimes you get the cart in front of the horse and you think you're going to help God out. And it doesn't work out at all. Because we didn't wait on the Lord. Amen. Amen. But we're going to look at Elijah tonight. And some of the things that he went through here. We're going to start reading in the 17th chapter. Verse number 1. Mm -hmm. And the word of God says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was in the habitation of Gilead, and unto Ahab, in the land of Israel, liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be uh, dew or rain, nor rain for years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, him saying, Get hence and turn eastward and hide thyself by the brook sure, sure, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, and he went and dealt by the brook of Sher, that is uh, before Jordan. And the ravens bought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and f uh, flesh uh, in the evening. And he uh, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. Now Elijah was a, a prophet. He, he went about doing God's work, and he done God's work, and he knew that he was going to use Elijah in a mighty way here. So he took him and he hit him off into a place and I gave him a rest. rest. Have you ever entered into a rest where God has just gave you peace just to set back just a little bit, to gather your thoughts, to get a little bit stronger, encouragement in whatever it is that you're Bless doing? You, Amen. And he moved Elijah off and he fed him and he, and he took care of him. See, I serve a God today. I, Brother Johnson, it never made me ever will be a raven and bring me none to eat. I, I, I don't know if I'll ever see that. But I have now went from a day without uh, food or supplies for my family. Amen. Especially since I was telling you earlier tonight in a service about I, I want to do this, I want to get closer, whatever. And he moved and he gave me a job and, and then he showed me that I would be a pastor of a church and I said, who do you want me to tell? Because it surely isn't me. Yeah. And then after a while, it all came to uh, fruition the only church that God ever showed me preaching in was Hope Church. So he gave me a work, and he always got me in a rest. Amen. Mm -hmm. But he's going to be used here uh, a little bit more here. Now we're going to skip down a little bit here, and, and God is sending him to a widow woman. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so let's go on down in, uh, to verse number 11. And as she was going to fetch, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal, uh, meal in a uh, barrel, and a little oil in my curb, 
And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that ye may eat it, that we may eat it and die. Now see, God knew that there was a problem down, down the road, and he was going to use Elijah. So when he went there, and he, and he entered into that place, and he told the woman to get this for him, he, I don't know if he knew, but she knew her circumstance. Sometimes our circumstances don't look so good, but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ knows everything Amen. about us because He stands by us. He walks with us. He helps us along life's way. In verse 13, it says, Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do uh, thou hast said, but make uh, me therefore a little cake first and bring it to me. And after make him for thee, and for your son. Yes. For this saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the occur of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Amen. Ain't it great to know that you got a God today, Amen. that no matter what you're going to go through, famine, yeah. feast, good time, bad time, whatever, Amen. that He's going to be standing right beside Amen. you, no matter what it is. Amen. Amen. That's enough that we should be out shopping Amen. around tonight just for that. Amen. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Bless the Jesus. Then he goes on to talk to a little father on down, but the, the little boy, the little child gets sick, and, and, and she wants to know what was going on, and he took her up, he took the child up in the loft, and he laid it upon the child and thank God to bring him back to life. Three times he done this, and God restored Amen. that woman, her son, back to him. Amen. Or to her, I mean, excuse me. Amen. And then we can look at what God done with him next. See, there's up and downs here in this thing. He went through some things. Amen. Uh, let's go over to chapter 19. Let's... Now, between 18 and 19, there was a a great meeting that took place up on top of a mountain. And they had all the prophets of Baal there, and they had Elijah there. And they took and they put this big old steer up on the, on the altar there, and they, he let the bell go first, and they did all the things, they cut themselves, they shouted, they yeah. did this. Sort of like the world today, isn't it? Ser serving some form of God, another Jesus, not the Jesus of the Scripture, the Jesus that they want to make up. Amen. And then when it was Elijah's time, they took and they poured water all over it. And then God caused fire to come down and Amen. burnt all, all the offering up. Yep. He had them do something miraculous again. So let's go over to verse 19 now. And it says that Ahab told Je Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he uh, had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message to uh, Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, <coughs> if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under the Juba tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough, O Lord Take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. Oh, listen. <laughs> Sometimes it gets yes, a little amen. tough. Amen. Sometimes we want to just toss the towel in. Sometimes we've got hurt too many times, brother. Not by the people out here in the world, but from the brothers and sisters in the church also. And how they will be beguile you and talk you down and all these different things. And sometimes we say enough is enough. I've had it. I'm done. I'm, I'm not going to go no more. Amen. Been there? Yeah. Man. We all been there. But he took and he hit himself off. 
And as he, it, it, by, uh, verse 5 says, And as he lay and slept under the juba tree, behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he took, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a curse of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid himself back down. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink, and he went in the strength of the mill forty days and forty nights unto Hebron, the mountain of God. Amen. See, God wants a good, stood beside him. He provided for him. Gave him what he was going to need for the next task that he had for him to do. See, God's that way with us also. He'll edify us. He'll help us along life's way because we, He wants to use us in a way that's pleasing to Him. It doesn't have to be pleasing to us. It's going to be pleasing unto Him. See, that's the thing with the world and that other Jesus that they want to serve is pleasing unto them. Right. See, well, I'm in this thing because I want to please the one that went to Calvary and died and spread His blood right. for me. And I believe if I was the only one, He would have went. Yeah. I believe that is the honest God truth tonight. Amen. So God's got him on the march again. He's gave him more orders. I got something else I want you to go. God bless him. So the angel directs him up to the mountain of God there in verse number 11. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountain, and break into pieces the rock before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. Amen. Amen. And as it was so, then Elijah heard it, and he wrapped his face in the mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? So he took Elijah and he showed him some things here. I thank God that I don't look. I look for things today, brother. I look for the way God has blessed me. I think we all do. But it's the small things I believe that God blesses us the most in. It's like the small little voice that he has. Or, or the small things along life's way. It's not great big old We don't got to see fire come down and burn something up on the altar to know my God is real. Amen. I know He's real for when I repented of my sin and got down that there was a change made in my life. Amen. There was something that took hold of me and came into me. Amen. The Holy Spirit of God which moves me. Amen. And God uses Him. Bless him. Elijah thought he was all by himself. You ever get that feeling? That we're all by ourselves in this big old world. Nobody wants to hear a thing we got to say. Nobody cares if they're not watching. We're just all alone. But God tells them over here in uh, verse number 18, He says, Yet I have left 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed him. Amen. Now listen. We're not in this thing alone. Nope. We're in this thing to win. Yep. Amen. My, my, my granddaughter will say that all the time. We're in it to win. And, and I'll say, honey, I said, we win it or lose it, it's how we play the game, and whatever works out, works out. But we're in this thing to win souls for Christ. Amen. No matter where we're at, no matter what we do. I've never been to a situation where I was alone. A lot of times when I'm out witnessing to somebody work or whatever, there always seems to be another brother or sister there. Yeah. See, God has our back no matter where we're yes, at. Yes, amen. And He wants us to go out and to preach the gospel to the lost. Well, I'm not a preacher. I don't, I don't got to go out. I don't got to preach. The Bible says that we all should know the Word of God, we should be able to divide the Word of God. We should be able to tell somebody the salvation plan. Amen. We don't got to hold them down and, 
and make them sit through a service. I love giving my testimony. Testimonies are so powerful. But as God used Elijah in his ups and downs in his life, it's the same way God to use us through our ups and downs Amen. in our lives. Elijah was a great man for God. But the Bible tells me that he's not a respecter of persons. Amen. Amen, brother. He loves us for what little bit he does use us. Or how much he does use us. He loves us. And he wants the best for us. Mm -hmm. That's why he'll stand with us. No matter where we're at, no matter what we're doing in life, he'll stand beside us. Sometimes I'm like Terry said, I, I, I hear the warning signs, I, I see the lights, I, I, you know, it's like you go to work and it said, the only one that, on the sign, on the walls at work, they got all these signs, you know, only you can prevent an accident or make sure you have your safety back. They got all these warning signs up where you work. Well, you know, the Holy Spirit speaks to us and then we take and go the opposite way. It's like not reading that sign. So as I brought this forth tonight, I, I felt my heart that sometimes uh, all right, we get ourselves a little down. Sometimes we get a little worried that we're going through too much. Brother Phil's going through a hard thing right now with his mom and dad. But he's going to go through it and God's going to be with him. Amen. Paul is going through this thing right now. God will be with her. She calls upon God. There are things in my family that I'm going through. God will be there. They don't believe it, but I know it. I just got to be able to accept it the way he's going to answer it. And stand and give him praise and worship. Well, that's why I've got my heart tonight. Uh, old Elijah, he, he got be used by God. and He, he kind of get brow beat down a little bit. And get a little worried about some things. And think that he's not good enough. And all these different things. And if we're not careful, we'll let the, the world out there preach that other Jesus to us and get us tore down a little bit and get us worried about some things. But Jesus said that he'd go with us and he'd stand by us. And that he'd be there for us. And he's our help. He's our, our, high, he's our buckler. He's our shield. He's a, our sword is right here. And, and we should have it also in our head and in our heart. Yeah. Now we shouldn't have to be able to pull off a sword but have this deep down in our heart Amen. that we can tell somebody that Jesus Christ died for them. Amen. And how they need to repent and accept Jesus Christ into their life. Not knowing Him is good enough. I hear people all the time say, I know. I know that. Me and Him, we, we got to hook up. Yeah. No, you know Amen. I know of some of Karen's cousins, even though I never met them. But I know. I know nobody. Like I know my Jesus. I'm not, I'm not super Christian. I just know what I can feel in here. I know what it's like to live a changed life. I know what it's right. like to feel forgiven. Yes. Amen. Well, stay on the fire line, church. Let's strive to make a difference in this whole world. Let them preach their gospel. We'll preach ours. Amen. We'll let them cut herself and, and do whatever they want to to get the sacrifice. And we'll call upon our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and give it back over to Brother Terry and let him close it out the way he sees fit. A thousand times I heard it as a shout of praise. Three little words to some of joy, to someone so amazed. Every now and then I hear from a broken heart of faith. Spoken with the whispers, the tears are wiped away. And it steals my breath to hear them say, God is good, God is good. When life doesn't go like he wish it would, 
He'll always be where he's always been. That's understood. Always, always, always. God is good. Standing in the darkness. I fear what they fear. They testify to a faith because it's settled and it's real. Because when comfort's in the chaos, peace is strong within the pain. Knowing they are held by a God who doesn't change. This simple truth still remains. God is good. God is good. When life doesn't go like he wish it would. You'll always be what he's always been. That's understood. Always, always, always. God is good. Amen. I was thinking of Brother Gary's message. And two people come to mind in the Bible. The first one was Peter. 